Well, welcome everyone to the uh, town hall uh, for reducing operational costs with high performance school buildings. This town hall is being hosted by the League of Women Voters of Florida's Clean Energy Committee. We've been hosting these town halls um, for over six months so that uh, we can share the, the uh, very exciting message of uh, the success that Mark Clinch has had with building uh, some very low energy use buildings for his school district, the Osceola Public School District here in, in uh, Florida. Um, we're going to, uh, if you would, please mute yourself and uh, we're going to turn this over to Mark and hear his amazing message. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Mary. I appreciate that introduction. Thank you everyone for taking time out to join us today for our town hall. A uh, special thank you to all our uh, League of Women Voter uh, volunteers. Uh, we appreciate all the great work that you're doing on the energy campaign. So today we're here to talk about reducing operational costs with high performance school buildings. This does not apply uh, solely to school buildings. This is for any commercial building uh, where these strategies can be incorporated. Uh, however, my case studies uh, as part of this presentation will deal specifically with school projects. Uh, the school that is uh, photoed in the, this uh, first slide is Neo City Academy. It is the first zero energy school in the state of Florida. Uh, what's particularly noteworthy is that this project started as a high performance building criteria in that the objective was to drive the energy use intensity very low so that with that remaining very low energy use intensity EUI, we were then able to apply solar uh, to get this project to zero energy. Uh, so you can see solar arrays are distributed throughout the roof and there is some remaining roof space open. Uh, so the roof is not completely covered. Uh, however, if this building would have been built to traditional standards and trying to get it to zero energy would have meant covering the entire roof and then applying an acre of ground mounted solar. Uh, so that is uh, really eye opening. But today's, uh, the focus of today's presentation is high performance building criteria. Uh, the specific high performance strategies to tighten the building envelope, right size the mechanical system uh, and other strategies so that we can get to a very low EUI before applying any solar at all. And why? Because U.S. school districts spend over six billion a year uh, each year on energy, uh, and that is second only to two salaries. So this is a huge number. Uh, consequently, this is a huge opportunity. What we'll talk about today is what is a high performance building, the why, it has to start with the why, and our why is to reduce operational costs. I'll share with you some case studies a little bit of terminology. Uh, we'll talk about a better and more efficient way forward and we'll land with Q&A. So on average, high performance buildings save 65 to 80% on their energy as compared to buildings constructed to traditional standards. Uh, here pictured are, uh, this, this is the same prototype. Uh, the first time that this prototype was built in 2017, it was built to traditional standards. Uh, the second time that we built it, we took that same prototype, we tweaked it, fine-tuned it to incorporate high performance building criteria. This is saving us huge operational costs. Uh, and the point here is you can take a prototype, a design that already exists, a design that is, is reused and incorporate these high performance strategies. So, it is not about reinventing the wheel. U.S. energy use is 40% in our buildings. Uh, a large amount of energy is required to uh, power our buildings in the United States. Here in, at Osceola Schools, 90% of our utility costs are electricity alone. We spend over 14 million a year on our utility costs. So that 90% represents somewhere around $12.7 million. And gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could lower that number and find ways to redirect 
uh, those savings to so many needs that school districts have, uh, to getting more updated technology, hiring the best and the brightest teachers, the list goes on and on. School districts and any government agency have so many needs. Uh, this is a way to essentially create a funding source uh, to fund those many needs. So our first case study is Neo City Academy. And this is, I skipped the slide, excuse me. No, I didn't. Uh, this is just to get Neo City Academy to high performance. As you can see, uh, the premium was 5.2%, less than a five-year ROI. So ladies and gentlemen, I've worked for school districts for 18 years, been involved in a lot of life cycle cost exercises. And any time that we got to something that was five years or less, we called that a no-brainer. Why? Because schools and government buildings are going to be around for a long time, 30, 40, 50 years. So if we can recoup our investment in five years or less, that is really something that we need to talk about. So the same school, when we apply the zero energy component, and that's adding the solar to that high performance, the premium bumps up to 9.1%, a less than eight year return on investment. Not too bad. And this school is actually net positive, which means that it produces more power than it consumes on an annual basis. Uh, so this is possible. Uh, this is something that can be done. And uh, to the solar advocates that we've heard from so many times where they want buildings covered with solar, 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 put more solar on those buildings. I think we need to take a pause and exercise a strategic approach. The better approach that is more synergistic is to first drive down that energy use intensity and then add the solar component to get all that synergy. Rather than just supplementing that building's power, we have an opportunity to address the entire power needs with, with net zero energy. But today's presentation is not about solar. The focus of today's presentation is high performance building criteria to get that building to an ultra low energy usage before applying solar or any other renewable source. Uh, this graph shows that the majority of the savings, 77% of our savings are with high performance. The remaining 23% is when we add the solar component. So high performance is the meat of this sandwich. This is where the majority of our savings uh, occur, which is why what has led us to our decision that all our new construction moving forward will be high performance. And we are incorporating high performance strategies on renovations to the extent practical. Uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, this is the case for high performance. So our next case study is the Osceola Business Academy. This is the same prototype that you saw in the previous slide. Uh, so our premium was actually less than 1%, rounded to 1%, a 5.3 year ROI will save an estimated 14,000 a year. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not a big building. This is less than 27,000 square feet. Now uh, we call our uh, estimated uh, so that we, as we commission and, and open our buildings, we monitor our monthly energy, our, our data for a 12 month period. And uh, at this point in time, we are actually tracking ahead. We're currently at $17,400 annual savings. So that's, that's really noteworthy um, to, to mention. And you know we always estimate conservatively because we don't want to overestimate and underdeliver. So I can tell you in all our cases, our estimates have been below what our actual annual savings uh, that we've achieved. Our next case study is Canoe Creek K-8. Uh, less than 92,000 square feet will save us 75,000 a year, uh, a premium of one and a half percent, an ROI of four years. Uh, so again, another you know, great uh, success story here. We just opened this school 
uh, to students last week. And a month ago, we did our final air leakage testing. It tested very tight. Uh, as compared to our, our 0.20 CFM per square foot, uh, we tested out at 0 0.04 on our infiltration and 0 0.05 on our exfiltration. That's 80% better than the criteria that we established. And we're doing this project after project. This is not a fluke. Every project we are achieving EUIs and air leakage rates that are below the criteria that we've set. Really, it starts with the correct mindset. So a little bit of terminology, high performance versus zero energy. I've been using these interchangeably. I want to stress that high performance is that ultra low energy usage. It's before applying any solar at all. Now, when you get the building to high performance and then add the solar, now you're talking zero energy. And that can be net zero or net positive. Net zero means that on an annual basis, the production equals the consumption. The two cancel each other out, net zero. Net positive means that you are producing more than you're consuming on an annual basis, which is the case with our Neo City Academy. Uh, so here's some more differentiation between high performance and zero energy. Uh, the high performance building component list, this is not an all inclusive list, but you can see some of the major things that high performance projects include. Thermal massing, the tight building envelope, getting that, that building to that, that Yeti cooler standard, uh, highly efficient HVAC, right sizing the HVAC, decoupling the HVAC, uh, dedicated outdoor air systems. We'll talk about that in a little bit further. Uh, cool reflective roofing, daylighting, LED lighting. Uh, so again, the difference between high performance and zero energy is with zero energy, now that we've achieved all this high performance criteria, we're now adding the renewable component, which is typically photovoltaic panels in the Southeast. That, that seems to work best for us. So here's the secret sauce to our tight building envelope. This is a typical tilt panel uh, uh, detail. Uh, we use lots of tilt, tilt up construction, uh, concrete panel uh, that's casted on the slab and then tilted into place. Uh, what is circled in red is how we have always sealed our tilt panels in the past, where we install a backer rod and, and a caulk joint. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how many times I've walked completed school projects uh, a year, two years later, and have seen where the caulk joint is pulling apart, it's failing. That building is leaking. Uh, so with high performance, getting to that tight building envelope, it's uh, employing a number of redundant systems. Uh, this is low cost, low tech uh, to getting to high performance. These uh, components are very inexpensive, low density foam, hydrophonic uh, sealants, uh, transition membranes. Uh, you can see some uh, hairy blue skin. Uh, so you know, these are very inexpensive to add to a project um, and go such a long ways. Uh, the photos uh, to the right of the screen are a pictorial uh, taken right out of our quality control manual. So this allows the envelope subcontractors coming onto the job. And as we know, we may not get the same people from day to day, but we want to ensure that they understand the expectations. So this particular uh, QC procedure uh, shows how those tilt panel corner joints are to be sealed. And it, it allows the envelope subcontractors to see uh, that step-by-step -step in a pictorial. So for example, they understand that before moving to step five, this is exactly what step four needs to look like and so on and so forth. So we apply this attention to detail to all the joinery in the building. The floor to wall connection the tilt panel wall connections, the wall to roof connections, uh, anywhere where we have penetrations in the building, conduit or, or what have you, uh, the ceiling of windows and doors. There is a high attention to detail to getting the building envelope as tight as possible, getting it to that Yeti cooler standard. I'll, I'll refer to that again. And when we do that, that provides the opportunity to right size the mechanical system 
Case in point, on our current K-8 project, our, our school project, we were able to take 84 tons of chiller capacity out of this project just by tightening, tightening the building envelope. Uh, in your homes, you probably have somewhere around five tons of chiller capacity. So in comparison, 84 tons, that's huge. Uh, and that's first cost savings that we're able to apply elsewhere in the project. And I'll talk about that uh, in a, a future slide. So here it is. Um, and this is, you know, in addition to high performance uh, driving down the energy usage, it's about uh, improving uh, the performance of, of the occupants and creating a healthier buildings. So some of the things that we do to improve uh, that, that um, occupant performance are things like a DOAS and CO2 controlling and monitoring. Uh, so we are able to fund these types of things from those first cost savings that we achieve from, uh, from right sizing our chiller capacity. Uh, a DOAS is a dedicated outdoor air system. So in the traditional buildings, we bring in some outside air and we recycle, recycle, recycle that air. With a DOAS, we take in 100% outside air, we scrub it, we temper it, and we supply it to the building. Uh, interestingly, ASHRAE, which is the authority that oversees uh, HVAC and mechanical, uh, formed a pandemic task force as a result of COVID-19. And what they found is that a DOAS is the number one thing that building owners can do to provide high quality indoor air quality. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we were doing this before COVID uh, and something that we continue to do. Uh, and we're able to fund these types of things from those first cost savings by right-sizing the mechanical system. Another thing that we do is CO2 controlling and monitoring. Uh, there was a Harvard study that uh, subjected pilots to large amounts of CO2. And what they found is that those pilots uh, were negatively impacted their, by their cognitive function, their ability to think clearly. They could not perform basic maneuvers. Uh, so we certainly don't want to create that atmosphere in a school or, or any building, an office building, a hospital. We want to provide the best uh, CO2 levels that we possibly can. So we're able to do this and provide 700 to 1,000 parts per million. Uh, by controlling our, our CO2. You know, another great feature of uh, high performance buildings that we incorporate is daylighting. Lots of, of studies uh, that show better test scores, better regulation of hormones, so many positive uh, aspects. Uh, one of the neat things that we did with Neo City Academy, if you look right above the covered uh, awning, uh, those are called translucent panels. And what that allowed us to do was to allow natural daylighting in without all that solar heat gain coefficient. So a very efficient way uh, to incorporate daylighting. So lots of positives in and above uh, high performance and driving down that energy usage. These are additional strategies uh, that we're employing on our projects to uh, not only drive down the energy usage, but to make those buildings a better place. What is EUI? Energy use intensity. It's everything in the building that consumes power divided by square footage. It gets you to a number. Uh, the lower that number, the better. Just like a golf score, a lower EUI is better. And here are some comparable EUIs. The national is 68. Our school district, 65. A little bit higher in comparison to the Florida average of 55. Uh, what drove us to high performance? Uh, so within our school district, our work is driven by a strategic plan. One of those pillars is fiscal responsibility. And under that pillar is energy conservation. So there was a, a charge uh, all the way up from our school board members and from my boss, the uh, superintendent of schools, to do something about this, to find a way to drive our energy use intensity down. Uh, so a, a big reason that has driven us to uh, high performance building criteria. And we're doing that. As you can see with Neo City Academy, 16. 
the criteria we set for this project was 20. So we were able to get it down below uh, that 20 to 16. Uh, and with that little remaining EUI, we then added the solar component to get it to uh, net positive zero energy. With the Osceola Business Academy and the Canoe Creek K project, the criteria that we set for those projects was 25. So on that first project, Neo City Academy, we really wanted the standard to be tough. We really wanted to try the waters, but we recognized that with that project, we had a seasoned designer and construction manager. So we wanted to loosen it up a little bit on our subsequent projects so that we would afford the opportunity for designers and construction managers that have little or no high performance experience uh, to perform successfully on, on those projects. And that is what we are doing now. And that is working very well. This is very achievable. You can do this. This can be done. So again, it's about minimizing air leakage, right sizing the mechanical system and other high performance strategies to ultimately reduce the energy footprint. But the biggest here is minimizing the air leakage. Why? because a major portion of, an ener of energy loss is through the leakage of the building's envelope. This is the voice of your father telling you to shut the door. He's not paying to cool the outside, but in essence, this is what we do every day in buildings that are built to traditional standards. They're leaky. And I'm not saying that the way that we've constructed buildings in the past is improper, but there is a better path forward. And that's high performance building criteria. It, it, it just so, it positively impacts the built environment. And that's what we want to do. We want to improve the built environment as we move forward in our future building construction. The biggest challenge is mindset. How many times I've heard, well, we've always done it this way. And, you know, let's just keep doing it this way. Well, keeping, uh, continuing to do it the same way and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Uh, so we uh, really need to focus on, on shifting that mindset. This is a shift in paradigm, getting people to think differently than how they have always done things in the past. Yes, it is different, but not substantially different. Uh, there are just some minor things that need to be done differently with high performance to achieve huge results. So um, this is uh, not intended to be my brag slide. Uh, this is uh, a cap caption of all our awards and recognition that we've received on the Neo City Academy project. Uh, we're now getting this this uh, recognition and awards on our subsequent projects at the Osceola Business Academy. Uh, we have three awards there now. We've been published uh, four times. Uh, Canoe Creek K-8, our most recent high performance. We're now getting that exposure on that project. With Neo City Academy, we've received 11 prestigious awards and we've been published 19 times by most every trade publication. Uh, this certainly is not why we set out to do high performance. It wasn't about all these awards and recognition. It was to do the right thing, to do things better, to provide a product for our community that was high value, that something that we, we could be proud of and, and save significant operational dollars. Uh, one of those awards, uh, various prestigious awards, is the ABC 2020 project of the year. And we're very proud of all of these awards, especially this one. Uh, we were one of four projects nominated. Uh, one of those projects was north of 300 million. The other two projects were around 250 million. And we contended uh, that, you know, we were just so flattered to have been nominated, so humbled. Uh, but we thought, surely, how can our little old $11.3 million project compete against those giants. Uh, to our surprise, uh, we were announced as the award winner. And it just goes to show that it's not about how much money you spend, it's about doing things differently, being, you know, doing things that are special and unique. And when you do that, 
the community, you know, organizations, they really stand up and take notice. So uh, for us, these awards are confirmation that we are on the right track. We are moving forward in the right direction. What about renovation? So I'm often asked when I share the case studies, you know, those case studies are all for new construction, but what about renovations? Well, the simple answer is it depends on the extent of the renovation. There are various variables. So it could be an extensive building renovation where you're gutting the building, you're exposing the building joinery, and you have an opportunity uh, to tighten that building envelope. Or it could be to the other extreme, a light renovation where perhaps uh, you know, you're putting in new HVAC, you're pulling out the ceilings, you're putting in new HVAC equipment above the ceiling, uh, and when you put in the new ceiling, you're putting in new lighting. Uh, hopefully that's LED lighting, uh, but whatever extent of the spectrum, there are opportunities to incorporate high performance strategies in renovations, but it starts with benchmarking. Uh, determining the EUI, hey, you know, and that's what we did uh, with our, our current Can project. Back in just a second. Uh, we got some background noise. If we yeah, can get someone to you. Number, right? Thank you. Uh, so oh, with our current comprehensive okay. renovation, uh, we, that means that we are raising and replacing uh, certain buildings, but the buildings that we must uh, retain, uh, we're renovating. And we looked at all those buildings, we cataloged the EUIs, and we saw with one building that it had an 89 EUI. And we we're like, oh my God, this is an energy hog. What's going on here? Uh, so further uh, analysis, we did a, an air leakage test and we found the culprit was the windows, single pane, jealousy style windows that were leaking like a sip. So our approach is going to be rather than the extent of the tenant build out that we anticipated for this project. We're going to back off on that tenant build out just a little bit. We're still going to achieve the intent of that build out, and we're going to redirect some of those dollars to putting in new windows. That simple act is going to get that 89 EUI down to a 35. Uh, that's going to save significant operational dollars. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm also a believer of commissioning and retro commissioning. Just because you hire a mechanical engineer and a mechanical contractor doesn't mean that you're going to achieve the design intent for that project. So this is that verification component where you are confirming uh, that the owner's project requirements are being achieved. Um, you know, and I don't look at this as an additional expense to a project. Truly, this is an investment because with the amount of findings that we have, it outweighs the cost that we pay for the commissioning. There are so many good findings that come from our commissioning exercises, you know, and, and also uh, with retro commissioning. Uh, all of you probably own a car, and the day that you bought that car and drove it off of the lot, it was very efficient. The MPG was way up there. And over time, five to seven years, it wasn't as efficient. You had to take it in for a tune-up. Well, retro commissioning is tune-up for, for existing buildings. Uh, they, they have to be tuned up as well. You know, over time, belts, sheaves, pulleys, various mechanical equipment does get out of whack and it has to be dialed back in. And that's a great way to identify what, I, uh, what we call in the industry overrides. So an override could be, um, you know, Mrs. Smith, science teacher at the local high school, she's a little hot one day in her classroom. She calls the maintenance department and says, hey, can you do something about this? So the maintenance department adjusts the air conditioning. And then over time, they forget that they incorporated that override. Three, four years later, Mrs. Smith is no longer at that school, but that override is still in place. Retro commissioning finds those types of things. Uh, we had a, a high school gymnasium. Uh, the, the gym floor was warping and heaving. Couldn't figure it out. We did a retro commissioning and we found that an override had been implemented to, pro, to dump 100% outside air throughout an entire summer. That hot, damp air was dumping into our gymnasium. Uh, fortunately, we were able to save our gym floor, uh, but 
we identified what the problem was through retro commissioning. So retro commissioning and commissioning are great tools. A call to action. So we're asking school districts, uh, school district leadership, and any government agency, commit to a pilot project. Try one on, see how it fits, see how you like it. Uh, you know, move forward, name that district champion. Who is that Rocky Balboa gonna be that is gonna keep the objectives on track? You know, for that first project, ladies and gentlemen, that was me, but now I have an entire facilities department of project champions. They have all served on these projects and they can talk to you for hours about high performance. Uh, they are my team of champions. I know that I can send them to a design coordination meeting or any issue on that high performance project and they will keep those objectives on track. Uh, so, you know, once the school is identified, preferably a prototype, you know, we talked about earlier in this presentation how uh, easy it is to incorporate high performance strategies into a prototype, a design that already exists that is re reused by school districts, uh, which is a strategy that we use often so we can uh, keep our design fees down. So identify that first project um, and, and set the criteria. On our first high performance, we simply added these three bullet points in our request for qualifications. You know, we made it clear that we wanted the design professional uh, to provide a high performance building criteria project um, and, you know, a, an EUI, our current EUI criteria that we're working to is that, that 25, uh, the air leakage of 0 0.20. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not that hard to achieve. And when you can achieve this, it will drive down your operational costs significantly. And you can do this with minimal premiums and a quick return on investment. We're doing this project after project. We now have another four projects in design that are high performance building criteria. And also, you know, that, that last bullet, the building envelope commissioning. This is really a small ad, you know, um, School districts already do HVAC commissioning on their projects. So to add the building envelope commissioning, this is a small supplement. It's not a lot of additional money, but a great way to trust, but verify and hold the designer and the construction manager accountable to achieving this criteria. And then, you know, after this is all completed, uh, you know, construct and evaluate this against the criteria, you know, uh, see what that estimated energy savings is coming in at. And, and I, I think you will find, uh, as we have, that we are exceeding our estimated annual uh, savings. Uh, we, are, we are just blowing this out of the water. And then have that champion report back to the uh, leadership, you know, whether it's a school district or a government agency, and let the leadership decide if expansion is warranted. I can tell you from our first project and the successes and the clear vision, you know, that we've seen that this is the way to go, that we are doing high performance and high performance zero energy ready on all our projects moving forward. And what I mean by zero energy ready, what we're doing is we're incorporating the provisions on some of these projects, uh, some of these high performance projects to add to, to have the ability to add solar at a later date. So the empty conduit is in that project uh, so that uh, at a later date, uh, some PV uh, contractor isn't coming in and drilling holes in the side of that nice tight building. Uh, but this is very inexpensive uh, to incorporate into a project. And, um, and that concludes our call to action. Uh, the other thing that I will add, I ask, that you have this conversation with others, owners, uh, construction managers, designers, government agencies. And if there is anyone that is interested in learning more about this, I am happy to provide this presentation to them. Um, I, I, just, uh, I just wanna share this information and share our success story so that others can realize the same success that we're having here. So with that, I will open it up for questions.